From the beginning of time, the white-tailed eagle has been a characteristic feature of the Norwegian coast and fjord landscapes. We wanted to gather eagles nesting in the Breisund area and established a feeding site at the top of Kvalnese in Ålesund. Gulls and crows arrived first, of course, but when the predator alarm sounded, it wasn't an eagle but a young goshawk arriving to feast on the meat. As the hawk was content and left, young and old black-backed gulls and crows swiftly reappeared. To establish a feeding site takes time. White-tailed eagles are cautious and have all the time in the world. They will not come down on the ground unless they feel safe and are hungry. It took a whole week before the first eagle landed in sub-zero temperatures, closing in on the frozen meat and frozen block of herring. Crows are clever. As soon as the eagle landed, they arrived, chopping away the frozen food. They were actually inviting, triggering the eagle to come. Because when the eagle shred the carrion, the crows instantly benefit from the smaller, more manageable crumbs. The first arrival was a really old eagle. The color code on its left ring was black over orange, which tells us that this bird was ringed in 1995. Later on, we could read the number on the right leg as well. The leader of Project Sea Eagle informed us that this 18-year-old female was hatched in a nest on Norlande in the town of Kristiansund. Then Eagle number two arrived, ringed as well, but this time the color code from 2009. It attempts to chase the older female away from the food, but that won't work, will it? Now we discover that this four-year-old has a fracture in its left leg. Perhaps it uh, hit a power line or maybe it happened in a fight. Broken leg, as we named it, eventually accesses the food at the foot of the mound and ravenously feeds on the frozen herring. A third eagle arrives but positions itself further out on Kvalnese. Not an easy task though, the frosting frozen foods in the gizzard. The old eagle also has some trouble swallowing, but succeeds in the end. More eagles arrive and land out on the headland. There are four of them now, and the fifth one comes in like a fighter attacking the feeding station. A yearling tries to pull rank, but quickly discovers that its place is right at the back of the line. Watch! A black-backed gull takes out a big chunk of the frozen herring, but leaves it at the rock. From the headland, Broken Leg has observed the ongoings, aided by his sharp vision. 
he makes a swift takeoff. This slow motion scene shows how this male, because it is a male, manages to grab the herring using his one good leg. Even with his handicap, he is able to feed himself. The adult female has fed for three quarters of an hour and has left. Broken leg has secured the bait for himself, but another male is swiftly coming in and this one shows no mercy. Another two cackling eagles land on the headland. The new male prefers meat and when we check its ring color and number, this one turns out to be hatched in a nest at Leinøya in 2007. Check out his hook to the beak. We have to name him Hookbeak. Sometimes we observe that the eagle is unable to close its beak. The pointed tip stops when it hits the lover mandible. In this film we mainly meet eagles from Ålesund, Breisunde and Storfjorden on Sundmøre. Hesseja with Sukkartoppen marks the border for several of the hunting and breeding areas. Since eagles in this area are familiar with each other, we can sometimes see quite a few of them gathered around carrion without too much dispute. The white-tailed eagle is the giant amongst our raptors. Its body measures around a meter and its virtually rectangular wings spans well over two meters. The weight varies from between four to more than seven kilos and in general the female is markedly bigger and heavier than the male. The eagle's staple diet is fish with the addition of a few seabirds and carrion. Research has made it clear that the white-tailed eagle poses no threat to game and livestock. White-tailed eagles are experts at gliding. They will ascend to more than 3000 meters. The wings provide a good tool for sailing, aided by the displayed tail feathers. Its eyesight is astonishing, much better than ours, and since the eyes are frontal, the eagle's vision is stereoscopic and it judges distance very well. The eagle has color sight and contrast sight that can resemble the use of Polaroid glasses. Oily drops in the eyes reduce the reflecting light and enable the eagle to see fish swimming under the surface. Its powerful keratin claws, made out of the same strong substance as the bee, are precision tools vital to successful hunting and self-defense. A large pine tree is normally the primary choice for the nest. 
It is usually out on the mountainous islands along the coast. We see eagles nesting on a grassy ledge. It's more common to see one than two chicks in the Norwegian nests, but up to three can occur. Every year new chicks are ringed along most of the coastline. The rings are solid metal rings resistant to wear and tear. One ring is put on each foot displaying a number that signifies birthplace and year. One of the rings used to have color codes indicating the year of ringing. As we can see on this eagle, hatched in 2009, black over blue year code. Here is a yearling hatched on Sula in 2012, but the youth sometimes fail to realize that rocks can be slippery. This one of the very first, number 11, with a new type of ring, recently come into use in Europe with the number of the individual starting with the letter N for Norway. Over a period of six years, eagle chicks from nests with more than one chick have been collected from the west coast of Norway. They have been sent over to Scotland and Ireland where the eagle is now reintroduced after its extinction in the early 1900s. Accompanied by other carrion birds as crows and ravens, the eagles can, especially in the wintertime, function as renovators who remove deceased sea and land mammals from the coastal and fjord landscape. This could be dead whales or seals that drift ashore, or carrion left by humans. A deceased red deer or deer will not remain lying around for long before the renovators arrive. The sea eagle's upper mandible has two large openings that mainly serve the same function as the human nostril. For a bird which, similar to the vulture, feeds on carrion, a certain sense of smell proves an advantage. Young sea eagles have black beaks. Eventually it turns greyish and as the bird matures it grows even more powerful and turns yellow. The upper mandible has a sharp and pointed hook which overlaps the lower mandible. It functions like a sharp-edged pair of scissors, well suited to tear and cut animal skins and meat. The plumage has several layers and protects the body from both cold weather and strong heat. The adult plumage, with a white tail and light-colored head and neck, is normally fully developed when the bird reaches maturity at the age of five to six. This is a young bird being hassled by a brave crow. Being a yearling means waiting for your turn along with the black-backed gulls. They also belong to the renovators and come in loud flocks whenever there is a chance for a bite. Finally, the young eagle gets its turn. Some yearlings can have a fairly light colored plumage, and here is one displaying impressive acrobatics on a winter frozen meatball. And then, of course, loud calls are part of the ranking order system. In the flock of adults we gathered at Kvalnese, there was raw force in abundance. The eagles tried to push each other away from the food, but without turning it into mortal battles. When most of the pairs from the Olsen area were gathered there, it called for some stills as well. The winter fisheries for herring and cod helps the white-tailed eagles through the winter hardship. You can see flocks of eagles along with the seagulls in the wake of the fishing boats. Discarded small catch and intestines get picked up with an incredible precision and speed.
The eagle can consume food in mid-air before it comes diving for more. It will seldom try to lift prey weighing more than two and a half kilos and normally they go for prey less than two kilos. The eagles at Breisunne know exactly when there is something waiting to be picked up behind the boats, but according to time of year as well as the time of day when the catch and nets come over the gunwales. Here we can see 11 eagles behind the boat and when they arrive in such numbers the gulls keep a distance. These flocks contain both residents and occasional roamers. The last category includes birds of various ages. Sometimes the eagle will lose the fish that rapidly flips around to pick it up again. We also follow the pair of eagles via webcam. The quality of the streaming pictures was less than optimal, but we got an insight in the life at the ledge. At the beginning of March, the eagles were busy repairing the nest and in adding branches as long as these, cooperation is needed. Here the male has arrived and sees the newly laid egg for the very first time. The eagle is well adapted to life at their sometimes harsh coast. Laying the eggs as early as March-April means that the eagles risk incubating during blizzards, but spreading their wings they protect the nest and eggs. A few days later, the incubating female lets herself be snowed in, but even white-tailed eagles need a toilet break once in a while. And in the early evening, the same day, there is a blizzard. A couple of days have gone by and the weather has stabilized. The female comes in to take her turn. Tiptoeing is the rule. The female moves about some of the grass and heather lining before she resumes the incubation. The male is back soon after. He concludes that the branch doesn't really fit in at the landing spot and moves it out on the snowy edge on the other side. It is breakfast time at the nest. The male is the main provider during the incubation.
finally he arrives with a meal of fish, probably picked up from a sea otter's feeding site. The sea otter is an important contributor for our eagles, and its habitat is being patrolled systematically. Usually there is a chance of picking up some leftovers. And while Mrs. Eagle feeds, the male takes his turn. On the 24th of April, we see the female with bits of eggshell in her beak. The first chick is hatched. This webcam shot shows two downy heads a few days later. Patrolling by the nest and eventually we see the two chicks growing and taking wing. The eagle is well camouflaged in the coastal nature and knows how to use it to its advantage. There are four eagles here, one on the branch up to the left and three huddling together down right. But the eagles can also expose themselves and mark their territories from the ground as well as from the air. We're back at Kvalnese. Today we serve frozen herring and the elderly female from 1995 and hookbeak are both in place. The observations from the first days of our feast indicate that this is a couple. Ladies first, but where should one start? That little piece of herring looks tempting. The male is permitted to take over, but what on earth to do when the beak jams? This bird probably has an excessive production of keratin, the same substance that makes up our nails. This leads to the beak not wearing down as much as it normally should. With his handicap, Hookbeak used a lot of time feeding he had to spend some time in the evening as well, when he really should be perching at his night roost. <laughs> 